Hey there, in this video I'm going to be going over how to use the LS2208 barcode scanner. This is the barcode scanner I've got set up here at Crow Lake. It seems like it's one of the more difficult barcode scanners to get working with all my programs just because of the different packages Motorola's put out for it. But this will show you all the steps you'll need to get it up and working. Now if you've just got a barcode scanner right out of the box, then it's probably going to be set up in what's called a keyboard emulation mode, which is the wrong mode for using with my programs. To see if it's in this mode, you're going to want to open up Notepad, or if it's not on your little bar here, just put in Notepad, set your focus, and scan a barcode. Now if it writes into this uh, space right here, as mine just did, this means it's in the wrong mode. This means that your scanner is working as its own separate keyboard. All the input it reads, it just gives your computer as if you had a second keyboard attached and you typed right into it. Now this mode is actually really hard to use for all my programs here because it can't distinguish between the barcode acting as a keyboard and your actual keyboard. So it's difficult to tell the different events apart. So if it's set into this mode, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to print off the LS228 Quick Start Guide, which you can just Google and get from Motorola. You're going to want to scan this set factory defaults bar here. I'm going to do it along with the printoff I've got right here. Right, and then next, you're going to want to go and scan this barcode to put it as an IBM handheld USB. Don't scan any other barcodes, they'll put it in the wrong mode but you want to scan this one right here. Now, what this does is it defines the scanner as a point of service device. It means that it has its own whole suite of uh, separate events that I can manually manipulate and trigger and all sorts of good things that'll help this go along. All right, so now your scanner is going to be in the right mode. Next, you're going to want to update your uh, Microsoft.NET framework and make sure it's activated. To see if it's activated, open up your control panel, find Programs and Features, and then click this Turn Windows Features On or Off. It'll take a little while to open it up, but what it'll do, it gives you a whole list of all the various features, and you're going to find the one that's called Microsoft.NET Framework, and just make sure that it's ticked off. Now, there are a couple in here that it's okay if they're unticked, there are just different subsets that aren't used in what I'm going for here. As long as this one's ticked, then you're good to go. All right, so from here, there's a couple different programs and uh, development kits and things we're going to need to install. If you've got access to my programs and files Google Drive, and go under the Resources tab here, I've got a folder called Installs Needed to Run LS228 Barcode Scanner. Now, these are the four things you need to install to make this run well. You can either get them all from here, or I'll show you where to grab them online, sort of step you through one by one how it goes. The first one is to install and update your .NET Framework. So if you just Google, install it as .NET Framework, then you can grab it from Microsoft, the 4.5.2, either the offline installer or the web installer, both do the same thing. Click through, and I'm sure it's a nice little button to grab it. Yeah. Once you've got that installed, you're going to want to install the point of service for .NET. That's either here in step two, or just Google it and grab this one right here. Now, when you're installing the point of service for .NET here, uh, at some point in the install, it'll prompt you to either install just the runtime environment or also the uh, SDK, Software Development Kit, you're going to want to install both. It might be that just the runtime environment wouldn't be sufficient to make it work, but in case anything goes wrong, having the SDK bundles in a whole lot of tools and programs will make it a lot easier to diagnose the problem. So once you've installed your POS for .NET, it's time to go to step three, the symbol OPOS driver from Motorola. Either grab it from here, or Google Motorola LS2208 OPOS driver. Click through, and you'll find it under Software Downloads. Here, grab the V3.31. That's the one you want to go for, and you'll just install that one and get it running. 
All right, and then lastly, you'll have this step four, the Motorola Scanner SDK. Now grab it from, again, the Programs and Tools folder or Google Motorola Scanner SDK. Click through. And we'll go to Downloads here. Scanner SDK for Windows. Scroll to the bottom here and grab the SDK either the 64-bit or the 32-bit, depending on what your operating system is. If you're not sure what your operating system is, just go to the start, right-click my computer, Properties, and you can see right here, I've got the 64-bit operating system, so I'll need to run 64-bit. Oh, the SDK, not the core scanner. Grab the SDK. Okay, if you've got all those installed, then it should be set up to work well. You can double check this by going into your programs. You'll see a Microsoft POS for .NET, which you just installed. And if you grab the SDK, there'll be some sample programs in here. Go to Sample Application and Test App. And it'll show you access to all the different sort of scanners you've got installed. Now, all five of these will appear whether or not your scanner is actually plugged in. If your scanner is not plugged in and you try to open one of these, it'll come up with an error. Mine is plugged in right now, and if I open it, then you can see it opened with no problem, and this means that this scanner is going to work just fine with my programs. All right, if you followed through up to here, then you're good to go, and this LOS228 scanner is all set up to work and run.